Hey guys, it's Jen. I'm back with three weeks grown out brows to show you guys how to trim your brows to make them look like this. In this video, we're talking about what you'll need to prep for plucking, how to identify what shape suits you, and you'll see it's actually quite easy, how to pluck and trim your brows, what products to use to soothe your brows afterwards, and a short brow makeup tutorial and some product recommendations. Okay, first step is to prep. You'll need a nice big mirror, preferably something that sits on your table so you don't have to hold it, a piece of tissue, tweezers, facial scissors, and some good lighting. Also remember to remove all your makeup so that you can see all damn hairs. Step two is identifying what shape of brow you want to do. To do this, you want to first assess your natural brow hair density. Is it dense? Is it sparse? Are your brows naturally thin or thick? If your brows are naturally sparse and thin, you'll find it really difficult to form arched brows, so you might just want to keep that in mind. Now onto brow shapes, they're straight. Straight brows are more common against Asians because our facial bone structures are flatter. So if you have sparse brow hairs, this is a good shape to go for. And then we have rounded low arch brows. Rounded low arch brows have a lengthening effect and can make your eyes look wider. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, you decide. And then we have soft angled low arch. This is recommended for oval shaped faces and this shape is also popular in Asia. And then we have soft angled medium arch. This is similar to the last one but a higher arch gives you a slightly fiercer look. It's also good for people with rounder faces. Soft angled high arch is also recommended for people with rounder faces and it gives your face more angles. And then lastly we have hard angled which is the typical Instagram Kylie brows where the arch is closer to the middle of the eye. I personally like to pluck my brows in a soft angled low arch. If you're a beginner and these size charts are freaking you out, then just ignore everything I just said because I'm going to teach you a way to find what works for you based on your natural bone structure. And it's all about positioning. First, I want you to take your finger and feel for your brow bone. That bump determines where your natural arch should be. So you should pluck at the brow bone area so that your brow sits right on top of it. Now, experts say that the head of the brow should form a straight line with your nose bridge, but my brow hairs don't even grow long enough or far enough for that, so mine are till my tear duct. Now, depending on your brow hair condition, you might be more flexible here, but I wouldn't go further than your tear duct, so don't go to the eyes because your eyes will look really far apart. And then the arch of your brow should be along a line that crosses the pupils to your nose, and the end of the brow crosses the end of your eye. And then we're at step 3, it's finally time to pluck. I always start with the no-brainer area first, which is the unibrow hairs, the, 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 what do you call it, the monobrow. The most obvious stray hairs are there. Then I move in to do below the brow. I start further away from the brow and then slowly move in, plucking away the most obvious stray hairs first. While you're plucking, remember to wipe the plucked hairs on a piece of tissue so you don't have a mess and you don't have like hairs hanging on your face. After I'm done below the brow, I do the top of the brow. Same deal, I start further away from the brow and then slowly move in. Now, if plucking usually hurts for you, I suggest you to stretch your skin slightly when you pluck. When your skin is more tight like that, when you pluck the brow hair out, there's less pull and there's also less chance you'll clip your skin. I have quite puffy eyes and there's a lot of skin around that area, so this happens quite a lot. Another tip would be to pluck in the direction of your hair growth and always remember to pluck from the root of the hairs because if you break the hair in the middle, you'll end up with little stubbles that are super hard to pluck. If you're a beginner, the best tip I could give you is to take your time. Especially when you get closer to the brow, every hair you remove is part of forming the brow shape. Like two or three hairs can make a huge difference. This is especially true if you have a scar underneath your brow like me. This is my real time plucking speed when precision is needed, like when I'm closer to my brow, it is very slow. After plucking, I comb my hairs out so they are all pointing in the direction of the hair growth. I like to use facial scissors to trim the hair growing up at the head of the brow. You don't need to cut all the hairs, the rest of my brow hairs grow in the direction I want them to be in, so it's fine. If I comb them up and try to trim them, I'm just basically thinning out my brow, which is no good. Also remember to use proper facial scissors here so you get to be more precise. I like to use a blunt end scissor so that my clumsy ass doesn't hurt myself. Some alternative methods to tweezers include shaving. Shaving can be used together with the steps that I talked about just now, but I would recommend beginners to stick with tweezers and scissors first. 
It's quick, but it can also become your worst nightmare. Also remember to use a proper brow razor. Another alternative method would be waxing. Waxing is quick and clean, but honestly, it's not advised to do DIY at home for multiple reasons. First of all, it's not precise, hence the chances of messing up is very high. Second of all, the skin around your eye area is super thin and it's more sensitive even for people with less sensitive skin. Third is threading, also known as epilation, which is essentially plucking your brow hair super fast with a twisted string. You'll need someone trained to help you do this, but this is a pretty safe method. And then lastly, we have laser hair removal. Now laser is basically zapping your hair follicles away so that the hair doesn't grow back there anymore. This actually helps you get cleaner, smoother, and brighter skin. You can also laser your forehead to give your face a cleaner look, which is what Kim K did right here. Step four, so after you've plucked your brows, you want to thank your brows for their hard work. I like to tone with Hada Labo's moisturizing lotion. This lotion contains hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant, basically a chemical that helps your skin retain moisture. After that, I soothe with Avene's Soothing Moisture Mask. All this moisture will go straight into your skin after you've prepped with that humectant, and I leave this on for 5-10 to 10 minutes. And the final step is to apply brow makeup. Now there's many different types of products out there, I'll briefly go through all of them. First of all is powder. Now powder lightly fills the brow and is good for people with sparse brows who don't want too bold of a look or for beginners who don't really, you know, you don't want to be too precise and you just want to brush it on. The tool you use to apply powder will determine how precise it is. You can do a more precise look with powder. Second type of products would be gels. Gels are great with shaping their brow hairs, but they don't do a lot for filling in comparison to the other types of products. And not all of them are waterproof, so you have to be careful with this. Glossier's Boy Brow is the one I reach for when I want a more natural look. It's got a bit of coverage, but nothing too much, and my brows are shaped afterwards. One thing to note though is this is not waterproof. I went to a boat party once with this and like brown stuff just melted all over my face. It was terrible. Another one I recommend is Anastasia Beverly Hills Transparent Brow Gel. This one is really good too. And then the third type of product would be a pomade. Now I use this on a daily basis because it's the best for covering my brow scar. It's super buildable and it's waterproof. This is my holy grail, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade. On this channel, we've reviewed quite a few of her brow products. I'll link it down below. I use this pomade with the number 12 brush, which is good for coloring the brows. But if you want a more precise drawing, like you want to draw lines, then I would suggest to go for the number 14 brush. Lastly, we have pencil. Now pencil is great for precision because you can like literally draw pieces of hair, but make sure you pick a good one because if it's too dry, it's, it just doesn't like the color doesn't transfer well, it's patchy. This Jouer Mura one is creamy and easy to use. Shelly uses it every day. There's also some combo products out there like Robin's Holy Grail, the XL Brow Pencil that has pencil and powder combined. Now back to my face, I've done makeup and it's time to fill up the brows. I'm taking very little product of the pomade and blending it into the brow in the direction of hair growth. For me, I just want to fill in my brows instead of drying hairs. I'm also focusing on covering my scar. And I'm using the shade medium brown here, which matches my eye color more than my hair colors, if you can tell. For the brown eyed peeps out there, if you want a more mellow look, this is a good hack is to match your brow with your eye color. The same goes for eyeliner. Another tip here is don't fill the head of the brow, like the front of the brow too densely because you're just gonna look angry. I just took the leftover pomade on my brush for that area. And then I finish off the shaping the brow hairs with the transparent brow gel so it holds throughout the day and we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's something you want to watch or you just want to chat, comment down below. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more, like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram and I will see you guys next time.